All right, uh, Ms. Sarah, thumbs up if we're ready to begin. Great, Ms. Servas, awesome. And Ms. Williams, thank you everyone. So thank you again uh, to everyone who has um, come to our PAC meeting for November, um, November 12th, 2020. Um, happy Veterans Day for anyone who um, uh, is a veteran or is currently in the services. Thank you for your service or thank your loved ones for their service. We are presenting using a new template that we received, and so you'll um, enjoy uh, viewing it. It also has our logo um, now with our International Baccalaureate in the background, so we're very proud of it and to showcase our kids as well. Next slide, Ms. Sarah. Want to speak to our outcomes and our agenda for today. We're going to be big begin, sorry, we're going to begin with celebrations. We have a lot to celebrate. And then we're going to go over our Title I uh, presentation. And so we're going to discuss what Title I is. We are a Title I school. Our Title I budget funds, how they're allocated and how we use them. Our school and family compact, so it's important, um, which drives also our family engagement. The order of this is a little shifted. I am also going to review our major improvement strategy. So our goals for our year that's aligned to our UIP, which is um, our state um, alignment to how um, we are prioritizing. And then we're going to uh, finish off with what's coming next, both in PAC and also uh, with our family community nights. Next slide, Ms. Sarah. So I'm not going to read our mission statement, nor our SEL uh, vision statement, but it's really important uh, that I speak to where we are moving. So our mission statement and our SEL vision statement is pretty new. Our SEL uh, committee this last May, um, April, May, uh, designed our SEL vision, vision sorry, grounding ourselves um, with our current uh, mission. And knowing that we have to make sure that we have a balance of both social emotional needs and meeting those so that we can support our kids in the academic learning that has to happen. And so focusing on rigorous academic settings, but also really building and fostering student resilience and problem solving. And as you all know right now, our kids need this. They need it all the time. But right now they're not with us, in front of us, so we want to make sure that we are uh, focusing to on SEL, social emotional learning. Okay, next slide. I'm going to pass the baton on to Ms. Williams, who's going to um, talk about our remote learning um, celebration and our engagement and our uh, attendance. Ms. Williams. Thank you. Um, we celebrated some data with our staff this past week around engagement as measured by two indicators. We were had data shared with us from the district around attendance and then how free or the percentage of students logged onto your learning platform each day and at our school that's Schoology. So again, we've got two columns. We've got attendance and then the percentage of students logged on each day on our learning platform. So lots of celebrations and we just highlighted some here. Um, when looking at the region, so the entire Southwest region, including elementary schools, middle schools, and high schools, the average attendance in the Southwest region is currently 82%, but at Bear Valley, our current attendance trends over the last couple of weeks have been 85.9, so almost 86%. Um, the average percent of students engaged in their learning platform and the Southwest region is 64%, but here at Bear Valley, it is 89%. So overall trends, there's lots to celebrate. Then when looking at some specific categories, such as students with IEPs, um, we were at, or the Southwest region is at 79% in attendance and we're at 83%. And then um, big celebration as the Southwest region has 58% of students with IEPs logging in um, daily on their platform, but we have 
75% logging in daily here at Bear Valley. So, and then the final one we'll highlight is our Black scholars um, are at the regions at 79% attendance. We're slightly above that at 81. But then when we look at our platform use, um, the region's at 57%, but we're at 82%. So these are just a few examples um, of data celebrations that we've been celebrating with our staff and we wanted to make sure we celebrated with our community. And then next slide. And we even see just in the last two weeks continued increase. And so green is meeting and we are meet um, in every category. And in fact, blue is exceeding in every category. So if you look at the top boxes, we had a few greens, which was meeting and lots of blue, which is exceeding. And then just in the last two weeks, we see a few boxes transition from green to blue, and we're exceeding in even more categories in both attendance and um, how many students are logging on each day to our learning platform. So just wanted to share those celebrations. We know it takes a community, it's us, um, all our various staff members and you guys at home to get these kids logged on and learning each day. So big celebrations. All right, back to our lovely principal. <laughs> Thank you, Mrs. Williams. And we are very proud um, of our engagement and of our um, attendance. And we wanna give a big shout out to our teachers because um, they have been working really hard to ensure that our kids are engaged. And also to our staff, um, we've had a lot of home visits. I mean, some home visits, but we're really talking about our kids that haven't engaged. and really seeing what we need to do to support them. So one of the celebrations that I wanted to make sure that I keep um, communicating with you is that we're on an upward bound trend with our enrollment. And so just wanted to showcase and show you our numbers that were projected last year, actually in November, we are given projections and uh, you see them on the left side our actual numbers are on our right side. And what I did is I highlighted in green when we were higher than what we were projected. And a big celebration, I'm gonna say sixth grade. We, we really worked hard last year um, to think about our um, feeder schools and how we can really get more sixth graders in. And so uh, we did have a large um, sixth grade class coming in, even in a remote setting. And so that's a huge celebration. It says a lot about our school and the work that our teachers and our um, staff is engaging in. Um, we had a little drop in seventh grade, but we made it up in eighth grade. And our final numbers are 468 students. We were projected for 447 students. And the reason why I want to bring this up is because next, no, this month, we will be getting our projections for the next school year. And we also have been working hard on how do we touch our families in a remote way. We can't go to the feeder schools, we, nor can we have some of those um, open houses that I know really bring in a lot of families because it's a different way to feel and see it. And so uh, we are working creatively to find some ways to showcase our school. And I will keep you updated on our projections. Thank you, Ms. Sarah. So the other thing that I wanted to speak to um, as a celebration, um, and it's connected to our International Bachelorette program and our social emotional learning skills, is highlighting our IB traits. So you see the tree of all our IB traits that are part of our programming. And what we are doing every week is highlighting one or two traits. And so this week, we focused on being communicator and a thinker. Uh, and what we are doing with our kids is highlighting it, showing up in, um, in our Monday communication announcements and in our classes, uh, we model. And we also look for those actions that students are displaying so that we can celebrate it. And if we go to the next slide. Um, so this week, let me take that back. We are focusing, oh no, I'm going to, Go back to this because I'm thinking. The last week we had risk takers and caring as our IB scholar traits. So this was last week. And we, also, we always give examples of what it means to be a risk taker, what it means to be caring. And what we do is 
Every week at the end of the week, our teachers vote on two scholars in each grade level who have uh, shown both of these traits in different classes in different ways. And then we send these um, scholars a card, a hand a handwritten card, right, Miss Sarah? And um, a gift card um, so that they are recognized and they are shouted out on our Monday announcements. And so this I've seen just from teaching SEL that our two, um, I've seen a difference in engagement with our kids. So this is working really well and really focused on building those skills and those SEL skills that are really important. Okay, next slide. I also wanted to highlight all the donations that we've received. And so um, we received a lot of supplies from Joyce Kitchen and Miss Winger is here and she's a big part of that donation. And so thank you, thank you for um, helping us bring all of these great supplies to our kiddos. Uh, we also received donations from families, which we appreciate in various ways. We also received an A to Z grant, and the A to Z grant is supporting some of the work that we're doing. I'm just looking at my notes. To enhance our mental health and our restorative culture teams. And so we are going to celebrate uh, diversity through kindness, and that's going to be coming up. And our grant is helping us ensure that we have the funding for it. We also have the COVID Emergency School Nutrition Feeding Grant. And what that has done is brought us, um, about, I believe, $3,000. Yes, Ms. Sarah? And what that we're going to use that is to purchase equipment for a cold storage, so freezers, refrigerators. Um, we're going to purchase carts and cleaning supplies, hand sanitizers. And we're going to be able to increase the number of meals that are provided and um, also really focus on nutrition to our families that are in need. We also have the Empower Grant. Um, which I wrote it down, but now I can't even remember what um, that consists of. Uh, Ms. Sarah, can you speak to that? Yes. Um, so Empower has actually donated to us ever since we became a school. Um, I think they were called something different. I think they've gone through a name change. Um, but they have a great organization of um, employees that always pull together. And usually they buy us uh, physical school supplies this year. Um, they kind of reached out to me in April in the midst of COVID kind of kicking us into their homes and they said, what, what could you use? And I told them cash. I said, we need to have the flexibility to be able to utilize monies. Um, we, we don't know what school supplies will look like. And so not only did their staff raise $1,175, their company matched that. Um, so we've got that money kind of on standby right now and it is continuing to fill um, our COVID relief where we've been able to give gift cards to families, um, gas cards, um, some of those more unique things for our really impacted families. Thank you, Ms. Sarah. And finally, we have both Thanksgiving and Christmas back baskets that are also um, really helpful for our families um, during the season. And so you see the two uh, foundations and uh, Sam Sandoz who helps us um, with our Christmas baskets and uh, during the Christmas time they get a turkey and a gift card. Uh, the Thanksgiving basket also includes um, a meal for families um, during this time. So very thankful for all the donations and just wanted to share that with you. Yeah, we'll um, be able to feed uh, 35 families with each of those um, holidays. So that's huge. And also to piggyback up on the Empower grant, we also got adopted by King Supers last year for the Giving Tree, which was amazing. We were able to give a gift um, to every kid that came and picked up a kid Christmas basket. Unfortunately, King Supers can't do that this year. So we're going to be able to mimic that and be able to get those gifts um, for those kiddos again this year. Thank you. So um, our MIS goals are major improvement strategies, um, support our school's goals, and are aligned to our district goals. Uh, these strategies are a part of our state UIP, so our Unified Improvement Plan. And our year's um, goals are completely aligned to what we call our three buckets, our MISs, and we create action items to support the goals, focusing on, next, that slide, please. 
So I wanted to share what our major improvement strategies are for this year. The first one is to build the capacity of all our staff. So teachers, teacher leaders, myself included, and our staff from front office staff to our um, restorative culture team, our deans. And we want to deliver instruction and interact with students using culturally responsive teaching and restorative practices. This is something that we also had as part of our MIS last year, but we know that we need to continue to build on the work that we started, it doesn't end. And so this is really help us, uh, helping us create a lot of opportunities where we are thinking about equity and what's best for our students. Our second goal is grounded on our school-wide culture and, and closing our achievement gap. Knowing that it is each and everyone's responsibility, it's my responsibility, by building the capacity of our staff to use data continuously and adjust daily instruction with the needed supports based on data, based on how we are seeing that our kids are performing, based on the gaps that we are seeing, we wanna make sure that we use that data to help and support. And then the third one is to maximize the capacity of all our teams. And it could be grade level teams, it could be a content teams, it could be restorative culture team, so that all teams vertically and horizontally align um, and have the same cultural expectations. Again, can, um, making sure that we're all on the same page is really important. So these are our MIS goals. And again, these MIS goals are, are what we focus on for the entire year and everything that we do is aligned to these goals. <clears throat> okay, so um, after speaking um, with regards to our MIS goals, um, I know that we are a Title I school and so we do receive federal um, government support to support the goals that I just mentioned. Um, and I wanna make sure that I introduce um, our community liaison. You may have already been introduced to her, so I'll reintroduce you to her. as She's gonna speak to what uh, Title I is, what it means, and uh, what, we, what we do to achieve the goals that I just spoke to. Um, Ms. Jasmine Servas is our community liaison, and again, reintroducing you to, um, to her, and she's gonna speak uh, to you about Title I. Hello, uh, for those who don't know me, uh, my name is Yasmin and I'm the new community liaison here at Bear Valley. I work for DPS in the Southwest area since 2005. Um, I took a little break to raise my family and now I'm proud to be part of the BVIS family. Now I will move over to the presentation we have prepared to discuss all Title I things. What is Title I? Title I is part of the Every Student Succeeds Act, ESSA, which provides financial assistance to local educational agencies and schools, which with high numbers or high percentages of children from low-income families to help ensure that all children meet challenging state academic standards. Next slide, please. How we spend Title I funds, non-instructional costs, student cultural support, attendance incentives, community family engagement, costs must be shown to help improve the student achievement. Title I funds can be spent on comprehensive school-wide intervention. Next slide. Oh, sorry. Um, last year, we spent, we concentrated more on the physical items to support the community events. Uh, we bought four outdoor canopies to support our back to school barbecue. And we use additional um, for curbside pickup of Chromebooks and the senior break. We also bought paper products like fork knives, plates, and condiments. We rent a jump castle for back to school barbecue. We also bought tamales for various back meetings through the, through the year, including our new principal selection forum. We buy crafts for our winter celebration, Valentine's Day crafts for after school celebration, balloon decorations for curbside pickup continuation. 
Our budget for 2020-2021 for PAN engagement is $2,342. Upcoming expense are Kahoot membership to offer virtual monthly family game night, gift cards for trivia winners, gift cards for Ivy Scholar of the Week recognition. Now I will pass the microphone to Ms. Leon. Jinx. All right, we need a t-shirt that says that, Miss Maston. You're on mute. So uh, part of Title I and ESEA is that parents have the right to know. And there's different aspects of what the policy uh, calls. The first one is staff qualification. And so parents have the right to ask and get information on their teachers' qualifications or licenses including the paraprofessional and student teachers if we have some. One of the things about Bear Valley, and if you remember that we focused on is ensuring during remote learning that we put our teachers that had the qualifications and experts in their field in front of our students. And so um, if parents wanted to see and um, get information on their licenses, you have the right to ask for it. Additional information that parents also have the right to know is their child's achievement level and growth information. And so any assessment that is taken here at school, you should have those results. You should get those results. Again, that's part of the right to know policy through Title I. Uh, and also you have the right to know when your child has been taught by qualified, has not been taught by qualified teachers for four or more consecutive years. Um, and so in our school, it wouldn't apply because we have three years, we only have three years. But if you're in a school for a longer time, then those four consecutive years, if your child has been taught by teachers that are not qualified in the content that they're teaching, you need to be informed. And so these are rights that you have as parents. In addition to that, Title I also speaks to testing transparency. And I put a link on that um, slide and um, I'll try to put it in the chat box in a moment uh, because it is linked to our DPS site that shows you what assessments are given to your child in DPS. And so that information on the test that your child gets, including the subjects tested, requirements and the purpose for the tests, are, is information that you also have the right to know. And then finally, language instruction. Uh, we know that we have kids who are in um, transitioning into English and are English language learners. Um, now they're, we, are call, uh, we are called multilingual language learners. Um, and you, if you have a child who uh, pr is provided English language development, you also need to be informed that they are in the program. It's also part of the federal Title III. And so when we identify students and as English learners and are part of the program, it is uh, a parent's right to know that information. And so if you ever, whether it's Bear Valley or any other school that is a Title I school, because we get federal money, then you have this right and you uh, can ask, I wanna see uh, my, my teacher's qualification. That is the right to know. Next slide. Sorry, my toolbar keeps uh, hiding on me. All right, so um, I have, I will copy these and get put them in here. Um, these, this is a copy of our uh, Bear Valley School and Family Compact. Um, as a commitment to our community, it is a fluid document that we continue to get feedback on. And admittedly, this year was a little challenging to get into families' hands because of the shift to the annual family update that we were really able to put personalized school information in. Um, so we will be thinking out loud on how we get this into families' hands a little bit cleaner next year. Um, but I have dropped that copy into your inbox or into the chat box. Um, it's 
broken into family responsibilities, scholar responsibilities, and school and teacher responsibilities. So if you have any feedback, um, good, or, good or bad, I would love to have that hit my inbox um, so that we can continue to um, look at this document and make, it, make sure that it's fitting to all of the stakeholders in our community for our child's successes. And I'll pass it back over to Ms. Yasmin. Hello again. Uh, we have a parent engagement opportunities. Um, we have family communication via school messenger, phone, email, and text. Um, we give updates about the school, social emotional resources, COVID update, district update. Family helpline, it's coming up soon. Communication will be sent out early next week to inform all the families of the AM and PM open office hours. Uh, I will actually will provide it with Miss Sarah, uh, help with these, um, the BVIS student expectations, how to get to Psychology and Parent Portal, how to read the report card and safety regulation. Coming, com, upcoming virtually engagement opportunities. We're planning a trivia night, which it will be November 18 and December 9, and if everything goes well, hopefully we have more coming up. Uh, we are planning on uh, having bingo nights, dates and times well for coming, math nights, early 2021. And as we were saying, we were want to do these to continue with the family engagement, even if we're virtually. Next slide, please. Um, as we were saying, uh, part and portal and psychology resources, uh, we want to help parents have to set up their part and portal accounts write directions, have to set up, uh, if we have videos in English and Spanish, uh, we have a Schoology Parent Guide, a Schoology Parent Videos, and a Student Schoology Support. I will pass the microphone to Ms. Sarah. I haven't been on Zoom for a while. Sorry, guys, a little technical difficulties there. Um, okay, so what's coming up next? We have got a really great meeting plan next December, for December, which will be Thursday the 10th. Um, we're going to have our mental health team, which includes our school psychologist, our school social worker, and our student, um, our school counselor, um, to really make sure that you guys are aware of all those supports that we have at Bear Valley, which we feel very, very fortunate for. Um, like Miss Yasmin pointed out, we are having a song trivia night next Wednesday, the 18th at 6.30. So I really hope we'll see a lot of families there. We do have quite a few prizes lined up um, to help incentivize. And then, of course, coming up is Thanksgiving break, um, a time to unplug and really um, give thanks for all of our blessings. So there will be no school Monday, the 23rd through Friday, the 27th. So we got through that meeting pretty quick. Um, I will open it up now to any questions or comments or concerns on any of the content that we covered tonight. Wow, awesome. Really, nobody? Anyone got a joke? Winger, please. No, I don't have a joke. I did want to add that there is another virtual something coming up that's in the works. Sixth grade is going to be doing a virtual open house for the families and the students coming up. So just another thing we can add. Perfect. Any other comments, questions, dances? <laughs> I know that uh, um, our state, our country, um, right now with the pandemic is, is going through a lot. And so um, I hope that everyone is safe and healthy. Um, Thanksgiving sure is, uh, I'm looking forward to it, but sure is gonna feel differently as um, I may not be with my family and I'm sure some of you may also um, 
not have the same type of Thanksgiving that you normally do. Uh, but I do have to say that uh, Bear Valley is like a family to me, so I'm very thankful for that. Ms. Dawn has a question. I do have a question. I also wanted to comment that. I just wanted to thank all of the staff at Bear Valley. You guys are just so wonderful. You've been such a huge support for my daughter and she's just doing wonderful things to all of you. And I hope everybody there gets kudos and just knows what a difference you're making. I, I feel so very fortunate that my daughter um, has been able to go to BVIS for these three years. Um, and then I'm excited my, my son will be going there next year. But my question then was, she's, she's in eighth grade. Is BVIS doing anything to help us transition to high school? You know, with the virtual year, I know it's crazy. Um, but I, I'm just curious about that. Yes, that is a great question. Um, and P.S. Rachel Marlowe for president. Um, I'll keep saying it, saying it, and saying it until it happens because it will. Um, yes, Ms. Perez, our school counselor, is in the works on doing some um, things for the, our eighth graders to really help guide them. Also, when, oh, it's the Tuesday, the 8th, I believe, um, DPS is still doing their career and high school fair. They're just doing it virtually, so all of our kids will participate in that which I actually think will be very, I think it'll be actually maybe better than when it's in person because the kids will really be able to do some pre-work in order to really know where they wanna go and who they wanna talk to as opposed to just kind of going to the Coliseum and aimlessly walking around to tables and being like intrigued by like squishy balls and stuff like that. So I really think that um, the district is taking advantage of this this different, this new normal, so that they can be really purposeful with where the kids get to go talk to. Um, I think they're seg segmenting it too, like that high school will be over here for a certain time, and then careers will be over here for a certain time, because again, last year that got a little confusing because kids, you know, kind of got caught up on one side or the other and felt like they didn't couldn't talk to high schools. Um, Last year, Ms. Zuckerman was able to get four high schools actually into our building to do a really uh, personalized open house. She's working with those feeder element, um, high schools right now to see what we could do virtually to be able to really ensure that the kids have ample opportunities to talk and feel out all the different high school choices. So thank you for naming that. And yes, we will have lots more communication to come, hopefully before Christmas break on all of that. Yeah. It um, I know that eighth grade is also focusing on some ICAP lessons that are geared towards high schools and um, helping students understand the different kinds of high schools and what each program offers, just so that our kids really get to know um, what's out there and what's a good fit based on their passion, based on uh, what they want to really, and it's hard to know what you want to do for the rest of your life, but at least they get an opportunity to um, see the different programming at uh, Denver. And also, I, I know that a lot of high schools are, just as we are thinking creatively, how we can have those virtual open houses. And so uh, Ms. Zuck Ms. Perez is going to be um, communicating those dates and the schools that have those to our um, scholars. And what I'm gonna ask her is to put it on a, um, the one pager so that we can send it out to our families and you know when there are open houses and uh, could meet with staff, could uh, maybe virtually visit the school and ask some questions. And then we're hoping, we're hoping that um, we can come back in person and have a continuation ceremony as, as our kids deserve. But we are, we're thinking ahead and we're thinking what's plan B if we don't, um, get to do that and last year we, we uh, had to come up with some uh, very creative ways but we were able to celebrate our kids and send them off in, in, a, in a really nice way. Thank you Dawn. Thank you. We, we appreciate you for um, being part of our community and also obviously um, your daughter is amazing. And um, I'll never forget when I first started here last year, I felt um, in an island, right, as you can imagine. 
and uh, we connected right away. She would tell me about uh, um, trips that she was taking, and every morning when I was outside, um, we always had a conversation, and so she felt, I, I felt at home um, because she was um, so sweet, and, and we connected right away, so very, very proud of her. Well, I, I think she feels that connection as well. She's had all through her career, all, you know, several staff members make that effort and connection to her too, which has made such a tremendous difference for this, you know, this hard set of years in, in schooling. So thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, um, have a great evening. We ended a little early so you can enjoy the rest of your evening with your family. And we will see you all again um, next month. And we hope that you join us for some of our family nights. I feel like I